but today uh, we, need, we have uh, stack overflow, okay. the rest of the stack exchange, you know, the core and everything. It's very common to hear. It's very common to hear. Uh, C Python is similar, to, or even um, C Python cannot interfere. Let's reminisce for a while, shall we? Please now close your eyes and imagine the late summer of 1992. For me, it's pretty distant past. I had probably just started to draw all these cars on the walls of my parents' apartment. Well, I wouldn't be able to, uh, to draw them on the computer for at least, I don't know, nine or something like this, uh, for nine more years. Because I would have a computer for at least around that long. And computers, uh, for the matter, would have uh, for three more years, for example, Java or JavaScript. Uh, because the first alpha versions of Java appeared only in 1995. Uh, but maybe more importantly, mm -hmm. computers uh, would have uh, CPUs with more than one core for not three, not even ten, but for uh, probably like 40 more years, I mean the consumer grades uh, computers. Uh, it's been 14 more years uh, until the uh, exploited par uh, parallelism on uh, consumer grade PCs was actually physically achievable. And yet, in this very uh, same late summer of 1992, the C Python gained multi threaded support. Uh, notice how I used C Python, you know, not just Python. That's of course uh, because uh, C Python is only one of uh, the uh, Python language implementations. And there are more of them. Mm, but uh, C Python is the first, the reference one. And if you don't know which one you are using, it will be CPython. Uh, as you can uh, probably guess, uh, it is written in C, uh, so it executes uh, instructions that are originating from C, uh, and some of these instructions uh, executes your Python code. Uh, so yeah, uh, CPython is not single format, and it hasn't been for 24 years now. And by threads, I mean, uh, I will mean throughout this whole presentation, uh, I will mean actual system threads. Uh, so the POS6 threads on Unix-like systems and Windows threads on Windows systems. Uh, okay, on other occasions you might see something like CPython can run uh, only, a, only on a single core. That is not, also not exactly true. Uh, it's not not exactly true uh, because uh, while the uh, thread in C Python runs, uh, not everything that it uh, that it does is executed in Python code. It only it it, it also executes uh, C instructions. But the sentence is not entirely false either. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing about it may be true, uh, sorry, is true, and that's the essence of the GUI. It's that C Python process uh, can execute Python bytecode in one thread at a time. Mm -hmm. So I hope you notice the distinction between them. Uh, yeah, uh, but um, these two misconceptions are both. Uh, from what I see, are so widespread it made me think we need to talk more about this. Uh, but sorry, the commercials first. Uh, I'm Jacek, I work at Growbots, uh, where we are uh, automatizing client acquisition uh, for automatizing something called outbound sales. Uh, and we are using Python on Docker, of course, on Nomad. On Google Cloud. We are also using machine learning and you know, whatnot. If you are not interested, uh, contact me later uh, because this presentation will be about 
So back on the actual program. When I was preparing this talk, uh, I thought to myself a few times, would it, be, would it be equally useful or maybe more useful to just direct everyone to what's already been said by much more experienced people than me? Uh, for example, David Disney, also known as the Bill Guy, mm -hmm. uh, who has been tinkering with, the, with this topic and uh, presenting it for like seven years now. Mm, or maybe Larry Hastings, the C Python uh, developer, uh, who has been presenting uh, this for like two years uh, on main Python conferences. Is there a need for more presentations like this? Mm -hmm. Well, I think even though uh, the gear is with us since like, uh, the, uh, since like forever, and even though it has been talked for and for over and over again, uh, and a fair bit of community may think that it's a close topic. Uh, well, I don't think it's, it's a close topic. Mm -hmm. As I already showed you, there are a lot of misconceptions about it. And uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of also uh, perpetual confusion about what uh, CPython can and can't in terms of thread, uh, the guild and parallelism are large. But it's also not only about these misconceptions. You see, the kill wasn't granted to us by writing in stone or by some primeval creature. It was designed and implemented by human beings, pretty much like us. And not only that, it has evolved since then. Uh, it was improved and even rewritten. Uh, <coughs> and my point is, it is not nor will be in the near future a closed topic. It is always worth uh, explaining and discussing improving and possibly replacing it with something else. But what is this deal anyway? Mm. Okay, first, um, to gain some necessary context. For that, let me remind you of, about a few fundamentals. Mm. As I already said, I will be talking only, on, uh, only about the actual system threads, not uh, user space threads like green threads or fibers or whatever they may be called. Uh, it's, what, is, what is a thread? It's a series of instructions uh, with some portion of system memory. Mm. And uh, this memory possibly may be shared with other threads within, within a higher order called processes. And the process is pretty much a grouping of one or more threads. And uh, while a thread exists, uh, it may be a few states. It may be currently running, it may wait to be scheduled to run, and it, and it may be currently blocked. Uh, and it may be blocked uh, because it made a system call. Uh, so a system call, in turn, uh, is something that Fred does when it needs systems assistance uh, with, some, uh, with uh, something. And this something may be uh, Maybe file system uh, operations, maybe uh, it may be requesting communication over the network. Mm, also, it may be starting on, on or terminating another process. Uh, and this list goes on. Uh, the, the important part here is uh, when a thread does a system call, uh, it is blocked until the, uh, the kernel system uh, has a result to send back to it. And speaking of, uh, yeah, uh, when, it, when, it, when it is blocked, uh, some upper thread may be scheduled to run in this place. And speaking of which, uh, thread, thread scheduling, um, this is being done by thread schedulers within uh, operating systems uh, kernels. And uh, the simplest, uh, simplest thread schedulers may even use uh, something like round robin strategy for determining which thread uh, should run next. Uh, but we long since evolved into far more sophisticated uh, mm -hmm. schedulers that uses, uh, <coughs> I don't know, queues or periodic balance trees or uh, priorities and threads groups and threads whatever and this kind of things. Um, the key point here is you cannot assume any particular order in which threads will run. Uh, but there is a rule of thumb. Mm, so you see, uh, 
Operating systems typically try to uh, typically try to, uh, to segregate threads into uh, two categories: uh, the I/O bound threads and the CPU bound threads. And also typically, uh, while scheduling uh, threads uh, to run, they will treat I/O bound threads uh, with higher priority uh, because the intuition here is as follows: uh, when when some I/O operation uh, completes and you have results to act on, it would probably be wiser to act on it uh, as soon as it's uh, available, then wait for the next uh, I/O operation to end, to complete, and only uh, run CPU instructions, uh, some CPU heavy threads, in the meantime. Uh, because uh, I know CPU time is a scarce resource, uh, but you can say I/O is even more scarce, even slower. And the CPU is always there to use. Uh, and the last part of this operating system class uh, will be signals. And this is a very lightweight uh, way of interprocess communication. Basically, it's the way for a thread to notify other process or another thread within the same process about that. Mm, so you may uh, not, you may know this command. Uh, and what it basically does is it sends a signal mm -hmm. to a process uh, with IDP. Of course, the list of uh, types of uh, signals is also very long, just as uh, yeah. Let's move to, uh, move to move closer to the, our actual topic. Uh, some of you may have attended the talk yesterday uh, about the parallelism in Python. Mm, so you may have seen the uh, gopher uh, analogy of that. Mm. But uh, there are still uh, a lot of people that confuse these two terms. And they are in fact not interchangeable. Uh, so you see concurrency is uh, when you can when you can run uh, some tasks independently. So imagine you had some work to do. Uh, you can split it in, in, in some way uh, and what this has to do with concurrency is mm, concurrency is a way of structuring our code but not running it, only structuring running this, uh, this, this work is related of course but distinct thing so you can run uh, these chunks of work, these tasks or whatever uh, one after the other you can interleave them somehow. And finally, you can make them run parallel. Or on two cores, maybe more. And so, while concurrency is a means of structuring our work logically, uh, parallelism is a way of actually running this work. Uh, and um, um, the concurrency, uh, it may create an impression of doing once, may, not once, and parallelism is actually making this progress physically, in par uh, physically, simultaneously on the same time. And while you can, and while concurrency is perfectly achievable on a single core CPU, uh, for a, for a parallel execution, you absolutely do need multiple units of execution. For example, multi-core CPU. Uh, yeah, and now for something completely different. How do we deal with memory allocation in Python? Okay, we pretty much don't, uh, because the Python implementation takes care of, uh, of that for us. And allocation is easy, and the allocation also is easy, but uh, only once you know what you can set in the other. And here comes the big name, garbage collection. Uh, so there are a few ways of doing that, but we will contrast only, uh, only two of them. Uh, so you can uh, you can do garbage collection through something called tracing, uh, or you can it, it is the uh, the most popular one, and you can also uh, use reference counting, which is much more simple. Uh, so tracing garbage collection pretty much works like this: it uh, it looks at all the objects that are considered root, mm. then it traverses these root objects and uh, look at their sub-object and then their sub-object and so on and once it traverses everything 
uh, every ever reachable object. It doesn't allocate everything else. Uh, this is relatively uh, expensive operation and it is done only periodically or when some conditions are. And you see the C Python is much simpler in this regard. It uses uh, the reference model, which works like this. Uh, C Python attaches an integer to all the objects. Uh, and that integer holds a number of reference, references to that object uh, from other objects. Uh, so, in this, in this case, it's a string. Uh, and um, when, when you uh, create another reference to, uh, to this object in, this, in the middle, uh, this, uh, this number goes up, and when you uh, delete this, this reference, well, it goes down. And when it's 0 to 0, uh, C Python knows that you, that it can safely the object because it is no it is no longer reachable and therefore no longer needed. Mm. This is much simpler than a full blown uh, chasing garbage collectors. Uh, as it appears, it, it is also uh, very efficient for single thread execution. Of course, the problem is uh, that uh, for multiple thread execution. Uh, these uh, these uh, reference counters are considered uh, shared resource, and as a shared resource, they are subject to a lot of uh, problems like risk risk conditions. Uh, what is risk condition? Uh, well, you have one resource uh, that two threads uh, can uh, need to modify at the same time, and so let's say this is an integer like a reference counter and. Uh, these uh, threads have the uh, need to increment by one. And uh, you would think that uh, uh, just first one increments it and second one increments it and it ends up being two. But the incre uh, incrementing process is not really uh, atomic. So it consists uh, of uh, three operations. First, uh, load the value uh, from the system memory into computational unit, then the computational unit increments it, uh, and then the uh, thread must store this uh, result back to the memory. And if the uh, first thread makes it with whole modification process uh, before the second thread starts the modification process, it's all good. Mm, but uh, it's all good and well, it ends up being too mistaken. But the operating system won't guarantee you that this uh, will be uh, this will happen in this order. Might as well uh, be like this. Uh, so the first thread loads the uh, loads the value, loads the zero into the computational unit. Second thread uh, also loads this uh, zero into the second computational unit. Then they both modify it, and uh, then the first stores one part of the memory, and the second one also stores. One to the memory. That's pretty much the uh, the explanation. Mm. But we can find this in some way, uh, and that way is called logging. Which now reminds me, I was supposed to be talking about something. Uh, what is the skill? Well, first, it's a TLA, uh, useful for uh, interviewing Python programmer. Candidates, but not only. It's a log like structure that protects the interpreter, uh, the C Python's future machine, uh, from being accessed by more than one thread at one at a time. And uh, in turn, for, uh, for a, a thread to execute Python code uh, or to uh, interact with a Python object, it must first acquire this log. <coughs> And of course, this is not the. Uh, what I mean by by interpreter? Well, I mean the reference counter that has been already discussed. Um, we have see, uh, we have reference counting uh, with in C Python since from the start or close enough to make one difference. Uh, second thing is some internal uh, shared state. Uh, is, it is shared by all the threads within C Python process. It's not really worth it into, but we, we, we have to keep this in mind. Uh, third thing, uh, our mutable data structures. 
And looking from, from the pattern perspective, uh, you would only uh, see the things like dictionaries or lists and more complex objects. But we must look from the C perspective here, where the new table data structures also include uh, strings and tables and integers. Uh, this, of course, is related to, uh, uh, to this thing about the atomicity of operations and race conditions. And last but not least are uh, modules within C in C, C Python standard library, but also a whole variety of uh, C extensions. So NumPy is starting the list. And uh, C Python always made it pretty easy to to, to write the correct uh, multi-threaded code not only on the Python level, but also on the C level. And I think that is uh, one, of, one of the reasons why Python is so successful. Mm. And it's also being called the blue language by, by Because interfacing with C structures and uh, functions from Python code uh, was, uh, was easy uh, for a long time. But it is also the case in another in other languages. And uh, interfacing with Python objects and Python uh, functions from C code is also pretty easy. And it's not the common case. Uh, but um, such a global work, of course, uh, guarantees threat safety not without the cost. The cost that we are iterating over and over. That simple uh, that C Python cannot run in Python code with multiple threads in parallel. Uh, but there are situations and situations that are very common in Python ecosystems where this field just doesn't matter. So when you have single thread code, uh, the, uh, there's only ever one thread to acquire this field, and it just Runs and well, nothing just here. And you, have, uh, you may even uh, compile the C Python without threading support at all, and then you end up with C Python build with no gear at all. So it not only virtually doesn't affect you, it doesn't affect you. Just that. Uh, when you uh, when you run the code on a single code. It's maybe even a uh, multiple, multiple thread at all. You have no parallelism either way, because it is not physically achievable on a single person here. So there will, will ever only be one thread at once to, uh, that, that will try to acquire the guild, and it will just acquire it because it will always be free uh, once the thread just acquired. So it doesn't matter also in this case. Um, when you get multi threading and threaded code by this IO bound, it doesn't matter that, uh, mm, that uh, C Python has to be a Why? Mm, because uh, each time a thread uh, does blocking IO, it releases the code uh, prior to. Uh, this uh, IO system call. And uh, other threads can run on the internet, just like that. But uh, when you have uh, when you have multi threaded code that uh, that is pretty independent, um, the threads are independent of each other, uh, you may have tried to increase the number of, of threads that to achieve better performance. And with higher and higher uh, number of threads, Uh, statistically, these threads uh, will wait more and more uh, on the game. But there is a caveat. Uh, because you see, the uh, increasing number of threads isn't without uh, increasing also memory consumption. consumption. And chances are uh, you will exhaust your memory first before the game will start to show its 
course, the, the such cases are hard to generalize, and you must profile your code to be sure about it. Uh, enter the CPU path around at last. Mm -hmm. So when you do a, a CPU heavy computation, you, prob you are probably using some binary extensions for that. And they also have the possibility of not, uh, of not harming you uh, through the kill. Mm -hmm. Because we're, when you are writing C code, uh, the, that uh, doesn't need to interact with Python index, uh, it might as well drop the kill and just let other other friends run it in the time when it does when it did the uh, uh, computation. Of course uh, this leaves you at the mercy of uh, of uh, C extensions developers or uh, mm, or you are maybe uh, writing these C extensions yourself and must uh, must remember about this kill job. But yeah, you have this chance. Yeah. Let's finally take a closer look how this will actually behaves. And uh, notice uh, I will be talking about uh, C Python at least frequently. So uh, there are three cases of course. If we have, have one friend, uh, it acquired the gear and it just runs until it is preempted by the operating system or makes a system call or just ends and life is simple but when you have two threads there are also a few cases how things may turn out and one case is uh, when one, one thread runs and the second, <coughs> second one is, uh, is scheduled to run and it tries to acquire the gear and this gear is currently, um, currently acquired so, uh, so yeah, the second friend, the uh, second friend, uh, says, okay, I acquired the gill, I will go to sleep. And it makes a sleep system call to it. And it waits uh, with a timeout, uh, also called switching time. And when the timeout elapses, uh, the, the friend wakes up, tries to acquire the gill again, and Again, two cases here. First, the first thread already ended or uh, is currently blocked. Anyway, it dropped the kill. So the, the second one can, can acquire it and just run. But it also may be the case that the first one uh, is still run. Uh, and then the second thread doesn't go to sleep uh, just like that. At first, First, does something uh, so it may actually acquire the gear soon. It sets a flag that is shared uh, by all the threads uh, within the C Python process uh, and then calls back. Quite the system. Mm. You see this flag and the switch interval uh, makes the gear time next. Uh, it won't make a uh, won't make the threads switch uh, precisely at the switch interval, but it is pretty close to that. So this flag uh, is being checked at every uh, at every turn of the eval loop within the CPAT integrator. And if it turned out to be set, uh, the thread that sees it uh, releases the guild immediately and signals the second thread uh, it can run. The second uh, thread wakes up, uh, acquires the gear, and life is good. And there is also a, a very one very subtle thing. If for some reason the first thread was scheduled to run uh, just after the, it dropped the gear, even before the second one uh, got the chance to, uh, to acquire the gear, it does something very nice. Uh, it for uh, for these two variables check uh, checks whether other, any other thread got a chance to acquire the gill in the meantime. And if not, it, it does not acquire it, it goes to sleep again. Um, it, 
And this very subtle thing is part of the uh, something called new real implementation in the CPython uh, 3.2, uh, implemented by Antoine Trouble. And this is much more important from the performance perspective that you might think. Um, and it, oh, not, uh, it's not always, it wasn't always like this. Uh, let me take it back, but not in, not in time. It will be more like visiting the museum. Maybe it won't be very far, maybe only the desk next to yours or another office. The desk or the office where using Python uh, 2.7 still provides and where the, uh, the guild is behaving a little bit different. Uh, not a little bit. Uh, you see, primarily it's not time -based. It uses this concept of virtual instructions, also called TIPS. And these things are roughly, roughly uh, translated to bytecode instructions, <coughs> to one or more. Um, it is not time-based, it was supposed to be, but it's really not. So you see, the first line uh, pretty much translates to one thing. Even though it is uh, the, on the order of tens of microseconds to run. And the second line, it's super surprising uh, example from David Business Talk about this subject. It, even though it takes like a few seconds to run, uh, it is also only one thing. Mm, and uh, to contrast it with something, imagine some N, and this uh, decrement line takes not one but two things. So, uh, back to the kill. Uh, every NT, uh, and by default it's 100, CPython does something called check operation. And this check operation uh, consists of uh, releasing the build, uh, signaling the operating system that uh, the thread wants to be switched. Uh, but uh, since these things are not, uh, not tied to time, but bytecode, as, as you have already seen, there is no I'm not, not sure why to tell how often this, uh, this check operation will happen. It might as well be mm, hundreds of milliseconds, a few seconds between the check operations, or a few milliseconds. There's no way, no really way to tell. Mm, so, uh, it is no sure way to tell how often the threads will speak. But there's more. Remember this assuring that uh, some thread uh, had a chance to acquire the guild in the meantime. You see, before uh, 3.2 there was not such a thing. And this is also not some um, vertical uh, issue that happens from time to time and maybe costs a few milliseconds. To the contrary, uh, when the CPU bound thread uh, doesn't check operation, it draws the wheel and, uh, and wants to be switched, mm -hmm. there is a very high chance that it will, it will be uh, scheduled to run before some, uh, some other uh, threads, uh, for example, it, it does uh, some I.O. or something, will be, uh, will be woken up uh, and it will have uh, a chance to acquire the kill. So it may, it may happen that um, that it will be literally tens of thousands of these check operations before the second thread uh, got the chance to acquire the game. Uh, and it is not, not also uh, not only this uh, this that uh, the, the second thread uh, didn't have a chance to uh, acquire the game in the meantime, the signaling alone after each and every check operation uh, does contribute to the overall overhead uh, here significantly. So now you see how CPython frequent to uh, improve the things around the uh, non-reader. So now you know uh, why PEGU exists and uh, how does it work. Mm, but you uh, 
you might want to ask how does uh, how will other Python implementations uh, deal with such issues? How or maybe even uh, how other languages deal with such issues? Is it only Python that has them? Or maybe is it only C Python that has them? Let's look at the alternatives. And uh, when we talk about the alternatives, the first thing that comes to mind is PyPy. <coughs> so you see, the PyPy's primary purpose is to be fast. That's like the first thing on the road. Uh, and this shouldn't have this big scary log that slows things down. And as it happens, it has the gear, just like the Python does. Even though it has more sophisticated garbage collection, uh, even though it is written in much simpler, uh, easy to use language, it still has the gear. Of course, it might, it might change, maybe some, maybe not. Uh, the guys uh, from the PyPy uh, work on some work on something called software transaction memory, which I quote, uh, will give you alternative PyPy, which works without a deal, while at the same time continuing to give the Python programmer the complete illusion of having one. Uh, what is technically, technically uh, translates to? Uh, the memory operations within the uh, PyPy process uh, would work like in uh, databases. They would execute as parallel transactions <coughs> that eventually uh, commit in serial. So the less uh, conflicts on, on the committing part of the data. But such a thing is very hard to achieve, and this is a long way still before we get there. Another Implementations are of course Python and Iron Python. Uh, so in Python, uh, when you write, uh, when you use a threading model, uh, you don't have a system threads directly. Uh, first, uh, you obtain something like a Java thread that in turn gets mapped to the system thread. Um, also, Java has tracing garbage collection and uh, this whole thing is much more complicated than CPython implementation. Uh, I admit that I don't really know about IR Python, uh, but I assume it is pretty, pretty similar. Uh, another, uh, there is a close friend uh, of Python in this question, and it turns out it is also implemented uh, very similarly. And, it, and guess what? The min minor of this implementation also has a big and a very similar one to the one that is uh, in C Python over 3.2. Uh, so it is time based A, and the performance implications of that here uh, are similar. And of course, Go. Uh, because uh, I think each, of, each and every one of us uh, heard something like I've heard Go is better, let's rewrite everything in Go. And we'll be, it will be faster and yeah. Um, uh, it is a nice language, arguably. Uh, it is uh, faster in some places, but it also uh, has a very different model of comparison than C Python or other uh, C -like, uh, languages. And the most important uh, things here are uh, coroutines, of course. So these are coroutines uh, that are mapped to system threads by a uh, by implementation. Um, this is in contrast of uh, using the threads directly, and it's also pretty common. Mm. So the next thing, these are channels, uh, which are using something like a communication suppression processes. Uh, yeah, and it means, I quote again, sharing data by communicating, instead of sharing memory to communicate. So uh, the communication happens uh, strictly by the uh, through the channels uh, instead of having some explicit uh, shared state. And also, I didn't uh, I didn't manage to find anything that resembles Syria in Go. And, uh, and uh, in terms of thread safety uh, and um, and structuring the, the word in the current, it's uh, Changes things a lot. It requires just a different mindset. Okay, short round. Uh, 
I was I was thinking about showing a few benchmarks about how they actually behave in different situations. Uh, but uh, you know the actual benchmarks are pretty much never uh, translates to anything that you have in your code. Uh, you, they are very hard to generalize. And micro benchmarks are like um, typically it looks like this. Uh, it's a, uh, you write some code, for example, a few languages or something, and then uh, go around the interwebs shouting, uh, well, look, my language is better than yours because it computes the Fibonacci numbers three percent faster. Or be it spinning up to those, or, uh, or responding with hello world, or HTTP, or this kind of thing. And you know, it's cool, you can, uh, you can paint graphs and use colors and you know, whatnot. And if it's your presentation, if it is representative for the code you actually write, uh, run in production, and your users are happy with it, well, that's cool. Uh, but you see, our users don't really care about the production numbers. But the benchmark, I think, is, isn't also that useless either. Uh, because if you don't have an intuition about simple models, uh, you will have a hard time reasoning about uh, more complicated ones. It's just like in physics. If you can't, if you, uh, if you can't accurately model a spherical chicken, uh, how do you model an entire farm? Uh, so I won't, you, uh, I won't show any benchmarks. I will just redirect you to, uh, to daily business talks. And uh, note here, uh, for Python 3, uh, it's uh, still pretty much up to date. Uh, the link, links are, uh, will be at the end. And now, imagine you have some code uh, that, uh, that is CPU one, um, and uh, this it, it is uh, running in multiple threads, right? uh, but it's kind of slow. You want it uh, you want it to, to work faster. And you, uh, you suspect that GL is the code. Uh, so you measured uh, your current performance. Uh, you established uh, what, what the expected uh, improvements here are. And depending on what the code does, uh, you may have you may uh, try different things. And the first thing, of course, is process-based based parallelism. And if the um, threads uh, that your code runs are already independent, it may pretty much be as easy as uh, changing a few imports here and there and a few object system solutions. Uh, but when, they, when you are using threads, uh, chances are they are uh, they aren't really independent. Uh, you may then uh, show some state or uh, when you need to uh, between each other. So we all have to introduce sharing data and synchronization for inter-process communication. And that means over. Uh, but, of course, you can also think about how to restructure the work that uh, the friends are doing. And uh, to make them share less things, possibly uh, synchronize less. And this is a very in itself. Uh, because uh, it means Less contention for for for, for threads too, so you may end, as well end up with having still a thread based parallelism, mm -hmm. and they will be faster. Mm -hmm. Another option uh, you might use uh, are binary extensions, and the easier way to do it to do it uh, is, uh, is to use SATO, uh, and it not also only uh, compile to bash the machine code uh, when you mark some variables as this will only be an integer. Uh, you can also explicitly say in Cyton, I don't do anything uh, with Python objects here. Uh, you might as well use the all in form of pretty much uh, looking as the context manager. So pretty much. Uh, if Cyton is not, not a good way for you, you may resort to TC directly and you have to see mac macros uh, at your disposal. By uh, beginning all of us and by end all of the first one releases the guild basically, 
uh, so you can do uh, other uh, item stuff while your C based thread does not item stuff. But, uh, and the second one tries to react uh, You must remember, of course, that uh, between these two, uh, you, you can't interact with Python objects uh, because you risk uh, segmentation faults at best and race conditions and deadlocks and other kinds of things in worst cases. And uh, if you have a lot of threads that all uh, are IO heavy um, and they are still uh, far from being memory now, uh, and you suspect the guild is, uh, is your problem, uh, you might consider going to a synchronous IO, be it async IO or twist IO, basically whatever uh, And the merits of a uh, synchronous IO uh, may justify the migration of our code. Uh, so, um, based on all of that, uh, when, uh, when you uh, have a whole picture uh, of, of the guild, When you take a whole picture into account, uh, the kill doesn't look that bad. But uh, a lot of people <coughs> still think that the kill should just go away. And by sheer statistics of the number of people, uh, I think uh, at least some of them uh, will be informed enough about why things are one way or not on, on the other, uh, and still have some ideas how to improve in Sibana. And that's very good, because ultimately this is a, a community that, that uh, drives the evolution uh, and improvements in, in Python uh, implementations. But certainly removing the guild isn't a wicked problem. Um, this, all these guarantees uh, we were talking about, uh, these are a foundation uh, of many design decisions we uh, in Python. Uh, and if this guard is suddenly changed, the rest of the Python must follow suit. And with enough manpower, you may, may actually do that. But uh, while well, we have a lot of C code, not only within C Python uh, and C Python's uh, standard library, we have a lot of C extensions on there. And they would have to adjust as well. Uh, and when you change something in the C Python, well, for example, okay, you can't assume thread safety. Well, adjusting to that for all this, all, all the Python ecosystem is, it looks next to impossible. Mm. So yeah, these are technical difficulties in replacing the guild with some other solution. But there are also more like political ones. The uh, ones that are hard to measure, to measure to be compared, but they are stipulated by the Google itself. And these are single threaded and multi threaded IO bound performance uh, cannot go down. Second, uh, the C extensions compatibility must uh, stay and must stay without any uh, backwards and compatible changes. And the third one, whatever it is that replaces the guild. Uh, can be much more um, much more complicated in the implementation of that of the And uh, the second one is pretty straight, straightforward. Um, you see Python 3 broke the uh, C Python 3 broke the compatibility with C extensions for every uh, for every extensions in existence. And it's been over five years since we have C, um, C Python 3 and it is still something like Skype issue. And we the system just cannot help it again. But the uh, first first one is uh, well, you would ask why the performance would go down. It's the performance upgrade we are talking about here. Right? Removing the guild um, should be improved in the uh, Well, that's a reasonable intuition, but it's not necessarily correct. And we have examples of that because uh, you see, uh, removing the guild wasn't, uh, it's not like it wasn't that important. It was a few times. And each and every uh, such attempt well, resulted in lower, uh, in, in 
the performance of signal for the execution is going down. Um, we don't have much time to uh, go through that in, um, in detail. But I wanted to, uh, to say a few things about the most recent attempt at this. And this is the Gilartomy, Gilartomy project uh, led by uh, Larry Hastings. Uh, and it tries to do something that was attempted before, uh, but to uh, the further extent. extent. It tries to uh, replace the, uh, the one big lock with final grand locking, but also explores a few interesting uh, te techniques like buffer reference counting, um, thread private locking, something called immortal objects, uh, but also uh, uh, give, uh, also to give uh, C, uh, C extensions developers a deprecation path because um, you see uh, removing the gear from C Python just can't be done without the C, C uh, um, compatibility. And uh, Larry tries to do it uh, as a separate uh, flag to the C Python gear. So you can either uh, build the C Python without the gear with uh, these two macros at your disposal and uh, it, will, uh, it will help you write um, this final grant locking. And uh, you can just not use this plugin, have CPython just as uh, you have heard. So uh, since July, when I submitted this talk, uh, there was some, um, some progress here uh, around, uh, around uh, thread safety of uh, modifying the strings, the dictionaries, tags, and so many deeper stuff like. Uh, thread counter statistics and, and this, uh, this kind of things. I suggest following the official repository as well as uh, Python that maybe list to follow. And uh, to end this, um, what, what, you, what should you do about the game? What, what should you do? Well, allow me to be a little, let's say, poke. You probably should. Because a lot of things that has a higher chance of slowing down uh, your code before the game does. And at the same time, you may, maybe you should. But in the sense that you now, uh, I hope, have more knowledge about how the game works, uh, how the things work around the game, uh, and uh, it will make your design decisions uh, much more informed. Also, the game improvements in C Python 3.2. Maybe just the reason to <coughs> finally migrate your code. And the third thing, which might be a choice for some, but I are very uh, often overlooked. Uh, when you are targeting performance, uh, it's much more cost effective to first assert the baseline, so measure what you already have, uh, what speed you already have, uh, then um, define what do you have in mind when you say you want the things to be faster. And then, uh, only then, act, be it a little, a little code changes, changing the parallel execution model, or rewriting the whole thing. Well, I hope it will be still better. Yeah, we have no time left, but uh, the small code example for that is pretty much on the first page of C Python. The site, sorry. So just just look at that. Uh, Cytum.org, I think. All right. Thank you very much for your talk.